I'll call this hearing to order. Good evening, my name is Craig Pettit and I will be your chairperson for tonight's hearing. I would like to introduce you to the other members of the Land Division Committee. We have Vice Chair Liz Danielson, Pat Kennedy and Bill Blakes. This meeting is held through remote electronic participation in accordance with the Municipal Act 2001 as amended by Bill 187, the Municipal Emergency Act 2020. And an order in council of March 28, 2020, which amended the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act and prohibits organized public events of more than 10 people. Or prohibits, pardon me. <clears throat> the purpose of this hearing is to give the applicant or authorized agent the opportunity to discuss their application with the committee and to respond to the written submissions which have been received. There's also an opportunity for the committee to broaden our understanding of the application by asking questions. Members of the public who are participating virtually today may also make oral submissions to the committee. The procedure we use is to hear the applications in the same order as they were received in our office. Our secretary treasurer will introduce each application and our director of planning will provide a planning brief. When the participants registered for the meeting, <coughs> While well, a number of the application they have an interest in was noted by staff. Participants wishing to take part in the hearing will be admitted virtually to the Land Division Committee meeting. Participants will be provided five minutes to speak to the committee. <clears throat> As chair, I will then ask each member of the committee by name if they have any questions. So we'll now proceed with the agenda for this evening's meeting. In additions to the agenda? There are none this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Um. All right, adoption of the minutes. Be it resolved that the minutes of the Land Division Committee held September 14th, 2020, here be approved as printed and circulated. All right, could we have a mover, please? Pat? Sure. Bill, no, I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? All right. Okay. We'll now ask our Deputy Clerk, Michelle Moore, to introduce the applications for this evening's hearing. If you would please, Michelle. Item 6.1, file number H-16 of 20, applicant Don and Julie Bernowski, location of the property, lot 24, and part of lots 22, 23, and 25, Plan 6, Geographic Township of Minden, now in the Township of Minden Hills. The purpose of this application is to grant an easement for a right-of-way. And if I could ask our Director of Planning to provide any additional comments, please. Thank you very much. So the application is to recognize an existing um, driveway, right-of-way access to the adjacent property. Uh, the proposal is for 15 meters by 12 meters strip of land to be utilized for that right-of-way purpose. And this uh, application came about because of an application to the Township of Midden Hills for an entrance. And due to the location along uh, a bend in this road, uh, they were advised by the township that the best location would actually be to reuse the existing entrance on the property rather than create a new one. Uh, so this application would recognize that. And uh, there were, were no comments or concerns from members of the public. And it is recommended that this application be approved. All right. <clears throat> Any questions or comments from the committee? Liz Danielson? No questions. Matt Kennedy? No questions. Bill Blakes? No, no questions. All right. We have motion, application H-16-420. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye. Bill? Aye. Thank you. I want to ask our planner if she would take us through the timelines and the appeal process on these applications. Great. Please. For the benefit of all applicants, um, once a decision has been made by our land division committee, there's a 15 day period where we will issue notice of the decision. You'll receive written notice and it will outline a 20 day appeal period whereby any 
person or public body which made a comment or um, brought a concern forward at the public meeting could appeal the application to the LPAT. Uh, the notice that you're provided will have those dates in the top right hand corner of the notice. And if there's no appeal within that 20 day appeal period, you will receive a letter from us indicating that you have one year to satisfy all the conditions of provisional consent as outlined in the notice of decision. And if at any point during uh, the one year you have any questions or comments, you can contact our office directly and we'd be more than happy to help you with those conditions or point you towards a municipal body or agency which would be able to assist you. Thank you. Well, because the applicants aren't actually represented by an agent, um, if you wouldn't mind, we could read through them because they are watching this evening. Oh, okay. If that's all right. Please. Okay. So, <clears throat> application for consent file H 16 of 20. The following conditions apply. Condition one one hard copy and one digital copy of an acceptable reference plan for a legal description of the severed lands. And the deed or instrument conveying the severed land shall be submitted to the secretary treasurer for review and consent endorsement within a period of one year after the notice of decision is given. Condition two, the deeds or instruments submitted to the secretary treasurer for review and consent endorsement shall be accompanied by an undertaking from the applicant's solicitor confirming that the deeds will be registered on title within two years from the date of the certificate. Condition three, Ends to be severed are for the purpose of establishing of establishing an easement for a right of way for the benefit of the lands located in part of concession eight, part lot 12, plan six, lots 26, part lots 22, 23, and 25, registered plan 19R2072, part one geographic township of Minden, and further described as 1187 Reynolds Road, currently owned by Donald and Julie Pernowski and any subsequent conveyance of that portion of the lands to be severed for the easement is subject to section 50 sub three of the Planning Act. Neither the lands to be severed nor the benefiting lands are to be reconveyed without the easement unless a further consent is obtained. Condition four, the registered owner shall pay the balance of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest to the municipality. Five, a copy of all reference plan associated with this application shall be provided to the municipal planner for the township of Indian Hills for approval prior to registration. Six, the registered owner shall ensure to the satisfaction of the township of Minden Hills that the township is fully reimbursed for any costs incurred by the township of Minden Hills for professional services related specifically to this application. Seven, prior to the endorsement of the deeds, the secretary treasurer shall receive a letter from the township of Minden Hills confirming that conditions four, five, and six have been fulfilled to its satisfaction. Once the applicable conditions have been satisfied, it is recommended that the applicant agent contact the Township of Minden Hills to request that a clearance letter is issued. Eight, the applicant is required to apply to the Public Works Department for a change of civic address for the benefiting lands. Nine, prior to the endorsement of the deeds, the Secretary Treasurer shall receive a letter from the County of Halliburton Public Works Department confirming that condition eight has been fulfilled to its satisfaction. Once the applicable condition has been satisfied, it is recommended that the applicant agent contact the County of Halliburton Public Works Department to request that a clearance letter is issued. There are some notes as well on this application. Uh, the applicant is advised that the County of Halliburton has a shoreline tree preservation bylaw. Current and future landowners of land which is adjacent to any shoreline within the county must abide by this bylaw. The subject property has been determined to be an area of archaeological potential. If archaeological resources are identified on site, a site specific assessment and mitigation of development plan may be required as deemed by the Ontario Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. All archaeological reports shall be submitted to the County of Halliburton concurrent with their submission to the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Should um, archaeological materials be found on the property during development or site alteration activities. The Ontario Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport shall be contacted immediately. In the event that human remains are encountered during development of the site alteration activities, the proponent should immediately contact the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and Sport and the Registrar or Deputy Registrar of the Cemetery's Regulation Unit of the Ministry of Small Businesses and Consumer Services. 
The applicant and any prospective owners are advised that endangered and threatened species exist in the area and may exist on the site. And it is recommended that the registered owner consult with the township immediately following provisional consent being granted. Thank you. 6.2. Application 6, uh, sorry, item 6.2, application for consent H-17 of 20. The applicant is Susan Edward. The location of the property is part of lot 17, concession five, geographic township of Lutterworth, now in the township of Newman Hills. The acceptance of this application is to grant an easement for the right of way. And I will now ask our director of planning to provide additional comments, please. Great. So this application as well is for a right of way. It is uh, making use of an existing situation where the driveway crosses a portion of land owned by, uh, by the applicant and their family. Um, I did want to bring to Land Division Committee's attention, as noted in the pictures I've included in my planning report, that while the diagram provided by the applicant indicates the right of way directly adjacent to the property line between the two parcels, um, based on our aerial photography, this may actually be off to the north a little bit. So um, I have no concerns or issues with the um, whether it is directly adjacent to the property line or not, I just wanted to bring it to your attention. It already exists. It's being used today as a right of way for access to uh, a property that's developed with a resource-based recreational use. Um, so that's really the, the crux of the application. And it would connect to Woodpecker Trail, which when we go south on Woodpecker Trail out to Municipal Road Allowance, uh, it does cross other properties. And so one of the conditions of consent is to identify that this property that will be subject to the right of way will have access over those other pieces of land as they go towards the municipal road allowance. I have spoken with the applicant um, with regards to that condition and they have uh, indicated that they're fairly satisfied that their deeds already indicate the right of way. So they should be fine fulfilling that condition. Any questions or comments from the committee? Liz Danielson? Uh, no, I don't think so. Pat Kennedy? I just, uh, I noticed that the width they're asking for is only 3.7 meters. Is that, is that their request or is that, uh, seems extremely narrow. That's all if you're going to open up a uh, driveway, maybe four or five meters might have been more. So that was their request as indicated okay. in the application. And I assume it's because that's how wide it is now. Okay. Yeah, no other questions. Thank you. No links. No, no questions. Thanks. Thank you. Conditions and on the notes, just like highlighting what each one of you have. Okay. So <clears throat> the conditions for application for consent H-17 of 20 are as follows. Condition one, one hard copy and one digital copy of an acceptable reference plan or legal description of the seven plans and the deed or instrument conveying the severed lands shall be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer for review and consent endorsement within a period of one year after the notice of decision. The deeds or instruments submitted to the Secretary Treasurer for review and consent endorsement shall be accompanied by an undertaking from the applicant's solicitor confirming that the deeds will be registered on title within two years from the date of the certificate as per section 53 sub 43 of the Planning Act. The lands to be severed are for the purpose of establishing an easement for a right of way. Four, the registered owner shall provide to the satisfaction of the secretary treasurer, one, certification from a solicitor or Ontario land surveyor that the lands, that the severed parcel has a registered legal right of way from a publicly maintained road. And two, if the access road crosses crown land, an opinion from a solicitor that the access road is not a private forest road, and therefore the Crown recognizes that the severed parcel has a right of access as set out in the Public Lands Act. Five, the registered owner shall pay the balance of any outstanding taxes, including penalty and interest to the municipality. Six, a copy of all reference plans associated with this application shall be provided to the municipal planner for the township of Minden Hills for review prior to registration. Seven, the registered owner shall ensure to the satisfaction of the Township of Minden Hills that the Township is fully reimbursed for any cost incurred by the Township of Minden Hills for professional services related specifically to this application. Eight, 
Prior to the endorsement of the deeds, the Secretary and Treasurer shall receive a letter from the Township of Minden Hills confirming that conditions five, six, and seven have been fulfilled to its satisfaction. Once the applicable conditions have been satisfied, it's recommended that the applicant and the agent contact the Township of Minden Hills to request that the clearance letter is issued. The notes on this file are in relation to the County of Shoreline or County of Halliburton and Shoreline Tree Preservation Bylaw. The subject property has been deemed to be of archaeological potential and therefore archaeological resources that may be identified shall be reported as well as human remains. The applicant and any prospective owner are advised that endangered and threatened species exist in the area and may exist on the site. And it's recommended that the registered owner consult with the township immediately following provisional consent being granted. We have a motion, <coughs> application H17420. The decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Aye, Bill. All right. Thank you. Do you have a seconder? Not on these. We just need everyone to <coughs> say yay or nay. Six point eight application for consent H dash eighteen of twenty. Applicant is Juan David Renko. The location of the property is part of Lot Twenty Nine Concession Eight in the geographic township of Guilford, now in the municipality of Dysart et al. The purpose of the application is to grant an easement for bell services. And if I could ask our director of planning to provide additional comments on the application, please. I will try. I have a tickle in my throat. Um, so the application is to provide an easement for Bell Canada and no new lots are being created. Um, <coughs> there, I'm sorry. <coughs> I have no further comments. Thank you. <coughs> Any questions or comments from the committee? Liz Danielson? <laughs> Pat Kennedy? No questions. Bill Blakes? No questions. Thank you. Michelle? Okay. Uh, the conditions for application for consent H 18 of 20 are as follows one hard copy and one digital copy of an acceptable reference plan or legal description of the severed lands, and the deed or instrument conveying the severed land shall be submitted to the Secretary Treasurer for review and consent endorsement within a period of one year after the notice of decision. Two, the deeds or instruments submitted to the Secretary Treasurer for review and consent endorsement shall be accompanied by an undertaking from the applicant's solicitor confirming that the deeds will be registered on title within two years from the date of the certificate. Three, the lands to be severed are for the purpose of providing an easement for utilities for the best of Bell of Canada. Four, the registered owner shall ensure to the satisfaction of the municipality of Dysart et al. that the municipality is fully reimbursed for any costs incurred by the municipality for professional services related specifically to this application. Five, the registered owner shall pay the balance of any outstanding taxes, including penalties and interest, if applicable to the municipality. And six, prior to the endorsement of the deeds, the secretary treasurer shall receive a letter from the municipality of Dysart et al confirming that conditions four, five, and six have been fulfilled to its satisfaction. Thank you. We have a motion, application H18420, the decision is that provisional consent be granted. All in favor? Yes, Bill. Aye. Aye. Gary, thank you. All right, uh, no correspondence. All right, uh, item number eight, 8.1 statistics. We've all had a chance to look at more. Sure. It resolved that the Land Division Committee receives the following reports for information purposes. Item 8.1 statistics, September 2020. Thank you. Do we have a mover? And the seconder, please. So move. Liz. Second. Second. Bill. Bill with that. 
I think they tied. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. We're waiting for the final time. <laughs> okay, we'll give it a go. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other business? No closed session needed. Next committee meeting. So hopefully December 14th at 7 p.m. will be the next committee meeting. Uh, it's anticipated we will be, uh, be bringing back the grant file. Uh, that was the application where there was a number of uh, public comments. So we went back to the Township of Minden Hills. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, December 14th will be the date you see that, as well as other applications. However, if there is only one file, then um, it is not usual for us to hold a meeting just for one file. Um, but I will advise everyone prior to that date. So you're aware. Can the applicant request a special meeting in the event that's time sensitive? Uh, they could, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. And then adjournment. A motion to adjourn be it resolved the land division committee meeting of November 9th, 2020, be hereby adjourned. All right, what's our official time? You are 721. We have a mover and a seconder, please. Uh, uh, I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. Thank you very much. We'll have time to go enjoy some balmy weather. <laughs> mm. See you in December. Yes.